more I'm going to show you some uh, ACL anatomy that's relevant uh, to ACL reconstruction. I'm going to draw a, uh, a right knee. I'll draw it in a way that allows me to demonstrate uh, ACL anatomy. This is a uh, tibia, fibula, uh, trochlea, uh, sorry, uh, trochlea of the, of the femur. This is the lateral uh, femoral condyle, uh, medial femoral condyle. This is the notch. If I was to draw the patella, it would be right here. So the ACL is a ligament in the center of the knee. Uh, in the past, we used to, we used to uh, think of the ACL as a single bundle structure like this, but now we actually know that it's actually a double bundle structure. There's another bundle right here. So uh, more recent anatomic studies have, have helped us understand, it, uh, understand the ACL and its function better. We have an anterior medial bundle and a posterior lateral bundle. The posterior lateral bundle helps to control rotation. The anterior medial bundle helps to control anterior posterior translation. The medial bundle, which is vertical, it helps to control anterior posterior translation and the posterior lateral uh, bundle, which controls rotational stability. And uh, we, when we uh, address ACL tears, our goal is to reproduce the anatomy. This is an x-ray of a patient that had an ACL reconstruction many years ago, actually in 2006. When you look at the anchor placement, these are titanium anchors that are used for ACL reconstruction, you can see that it's uh, that the tunnels were placed very vertically. So this patient had a successful anteromedial medial uh, bundle reconstruction. However, they do not have a good they, they will they do not have good rotational stability because of the uh, position of the ACL. This is how we used to reconstruct ACLs. Our techniques are now more refined so that we can better replicate the natural anatomy. Once again, this is a vertically placed uh, ACL. This patient is already starting to show signs of failure. This is a case that I uh, recently operated on. It's a uh, high level uh, athlete, happens to be a mixed martial artist. Uh, his bone was so um, hard when I did his ACL reconstruction that I had to use the old school titanium um, interference screws. But what's good about these screws is that allows you to critique your work uh, on an x-ray like this one. Here you can see uh, my uh, lines that I drew of his old reconstruction. Uh, once again, the old reconstruction had somewhat a vertical uh, placed uh, femoral tunnel. And now the new femoral tunnel more angled to help control rotational stability. If you look at the lateral view, you can see my, uh, my femoral uh, uh, screw moving away from us, and that's because of the, uh, the uh, uh, desired angle that I wanted when I placed that femoral tunnel. Once again, I'm replicating the anatomy and the function of the native ACL. Once we create our femoral tunnel uh, in this spot, uh, tibial tunnel is also created in a way uh, that uh, replicates uh, both bundles as well. We have a tibial tunnel. and our graft, whether it's a bone patella tendon bone, uh, aloe graft, or whatever it is, it's slipped through here, and we slide it in. The block goes here, new graft right there, and then we lock it in with two interference screws, just like I showed. And uh, if we do it right, then we get rotational stability and anterior-posterior stability. Here is an example of one of my ACL reconstructions. You can see that the new ACL graft is placed in a non-vertical position to replicate both the anterior medial and the posterior lateral bundles. That little lesson on ACL anatomy was helpful. I hope that if anybody is going through ACL surgery, that everything goes well. Thank you.